All right, uh, welcome back, free radicals of all shapes, sizes, colors, denominations, orientations. Aloha from uh, sunny, scorched Florida, where we have a little bit of relief here today. Not as much, because I'm further south, but uh, in any event, instead of uh, 93 today, it's going to be probably 88. So um, <laughs> fall is finally here. It only took to uh, get to November. Um you know, I, I put out a tweet yesterday where I said, you know what, I just, I really don't need this crap. I don't need this tribal BS. I don't, you know, the fact that I have to take to Twitter and do a vigorous defense of Tulsi Gabbard because she's um, just doing what she normally does, which is aloha. People didn't understand it with the whole Biden thing. They didn't get it. Uh, they didn't get it with the Ellen thing. And the Ellen thing, I think I had more issues with than any other thing. Because Ellen is this, I don't know, just kind of this vacuous daytime entertainment celeb culture thing. Um, long ago, she was a comedian and she was not too bad of a comedian. I mean, but today it's just like, hey, let's prop up everything that is um, distracting in our culture where we can't focus on real issues. Uh, but this latest um, so-called uh, dust-up or whatever it is has to do with her defense of Barack Obama calling out the cancel culture, more or less calling out the fact that um, woke people, this wokeness has maybe um, gotten a little out of hand. And... Uh, if you spend any time on Twitter, you understand that Barack Obama is correct. Now, <laughs> the neoprogs are all going out of their way, though, to say, hey, Obama can't say this because look at what he did as far as his foreign policy goes. Look at, you know, and all of the things that Obama promised, basically, to kind of be um, focused on domestic policy and to do less intervention let me let me give you a little scoop okay a little a little scoop and this is perspective this isn't like i know for sure this goes on but i can and i'm worried by the way i'm very worried about bernie sanders if he were to be president because of this i'm still worried about tulsi gabbard not maybe quite as much but so the president takes you know the oath of office and he gets into the oval and his first few meetings are with these bureaucrats that have been there prior to him now he can he can appoint some new ones if he wants to but they all have to have kind of like the same qualifications as the ones that he's going to be booting out of there politically speaking these people just they they're kind of like a blank slate they have one agenda and that is to promote empire that's what they do they essentially say mr president I know you ran on this platform. They, they've done it to Trump. And Trump, because he's such an opportunist, um, certainly he's going to cave. I think Trump uh, outwardly has pushed back more than any president that I've seen in quite some time. Um, however, it, he's still uh, caving. Obama got into the Oval Office as this JFK type of candidate at the time people saw in him all of this hope and change and then you had um the economic collapse happened right when he was going into office and his remedy for that was bailing out banks and car companies and um shovel ready jobs that weren't actually shovel ready and you could go back through all of that and just kind of shake your head and say none of it worked um some of it may have alleviated um, some of the bleeding to some degree, but from an economic long-term prosperity economic standpoint for the rest of the country, especially if you're a member of the working poor or the middle class, no, didn't it didn't do all that much good. So all of those policies, though, uh, and then we focus on the foreign policy is where we're going to critique Obama and we're going to lump him with George W. Bush, which honestly, I don't know if that's a fair assessment. Because Bush got this machine running, and he was a willing participant. 
he got to the Oval Office, and don't forget who George W. Bush was raised by. <laughs> so it's kind of like they had their guy. All of the deep state people had their guy, and he was, you want to go to Iraq? Let's go to Iraq. And then um, duping the American people, that, that was fairly easy propaganda to just keep pounding with the mainstream media on your side. And then Democrats who voted for it, they're always going to be um, castigated for voting for it. You voted for the Iraq war. Uh, but I'm just trying to, I'm, now I'm fast forwarding. So you've got these neo prog talkers out there who are saying, well, I can't believe she's citing Obama. And she's using that as a way to criticize this cancel culture, which, by the way, is coming for every one of us if it keeps going the way it's going. If we don't push back and say, nope, sorry. And it's happening, obviously, to many on the right. And it's happening uh, on the left in some quarters, depending on what you're talking about on a daily basis. If you're talking about serious issues, um, you're probably going to get canceled at some point. If you're talking about the uh, Russian meddling, uh, you're you're going to be propped up. You Somebody might send you money. Uh, it's, it's really weird. So Tulsi Gabbard sees this. Obama goes before a bunch of younger sort of woke activists and says, hey, you know, you can't cancel everything. You can't just, this isn't a way to build bridges and to, and to win converts to your side of the issue. And I've been saying this for quite a long time to many progressives who tend to use overtly salty language when there's no need to. Uh, they tend to um, make themselves, they put themselves, they criticize all these elitists, and then they put themselves up on the same type of ped pedestal. You know, Elizabeth Warren, Ivory Tower, they're all going after Elizabeth Warren. And I'm not defending Elizabeth Warren, but it's funny because there is, again, there's a big club, and George Carlin was right, you ain't in it. And I hate to say it, a lot of these neoprogs, they want you in their club. And if you don't walk in lockstep with them, they're going to come out and they're going to do videos that that impugn Tulsi Gabbard for practicing aloha. That's what this boils down to. Because she used that example to say, hey, there's not enough civility in our conversation. I'm sorry. See this shirt? Blessed are the peacemakers. It, it applies... By the way, if Tulsi Gabbard is willing to go talk to Assad, right, and most neoprogs are okay with that because they're saying, well, we need to talk to these people. Um, her policy is smart because if we're going to negotiate peace, sometimes you have to talk to the worst people on planet Earth. Did you hear what I just said? Sometimes you have to talk to the worst people on planet Earth in order to forge some type of way forward. So if you're canceling Barack Obama because he made a good point, then you're not going to be, I'm sorry, your argument for talking to the dictator falls on its face. Because the dictator, I'm sorry, the dictator is worse than Obama. You may say, they're. do you think Assad and Obama are the same thing? Because if you're going to go down that road, then you've lost even me. I'm not a fan of Obama whatsoever. But, um, you know, what I'm saying is, Tulsi Gabbard, all she did, you know, if, if Hitler says ice is cold and you agree with the fact that ice is cold, you've committed uh, the cardinal sin, apparently, with this new culture. And most Americans, in, independents, Green Party, Libertarian people, whoever they are across the fruited plain, they're going to look at you and they're going to say, I don't understand what you're talking about. Um, African Americans who voted for a Barack for, they voted for Obama, and you're sitting there uh, telling them that their favorite president is a war criminal. Okay, you're maybe you can convince them. Maybe you're so enlightened that you're going to convince the mass of people to go down this road with you. And I just, I don't see it happening. Um, this is making a complete mountain out of not even a molehill. 
but yet we're going to hold Tulsi Gabbard to this standard because um, the hyper critique of Tulsi Gabbard coming from every single quarter of the media, neoprogs, neolibs, obviously, neoconservatives don't like her, um, go across the board and you're going to find, and that's how you know this is a candidate that is something different and has her own agenda. She's not focus testing. She she might be doing some political consulting that might steer one issue over another issue. You know, it's questionable whether foreign policy is going to work as far as the number one issue that she talks about because in the past it's too wonky. The Americans want to know what this does for me and my family. If you're saying you want to uh, end regime change war, what does that do for me? How does that affect me? And Tulsi does a great job explaining it, but in the soundbite culture that we live in, uh, unless you sit down and talk with her, I don't think you're going to understand the scope of what she's trying to say. So it's risky. And it shows she's willing to take all kinds of risk, defending people, saying that, hey, I wish we could all get along which that was the premise of the Ellen thing. Hey, it would be nice to be able to talk to each other, that you people that you disagree with. And everybody immediately said, well, Bush is a war criminal. That's a non-starter. I'm more in agreement with that than I am with this latest stuff with Obama. However, I see where I still was enlightened enough to see where Tulsi was, what she was trying to say. I wasn't closing this off because it, it just, we're in a, we are in a free fall when it comes to civility. We are in a moral free fall, and we are falling rapidly as a culture. And the people, I'm sorry to impugn Bernie people, most of this comes from younger Bernie people who are kind of locked into a certain mentality. They have their issues, and nobody's going to get in their way. And a lot of them come out and say, well, I was willing to support Tulsi. No, you weren't going to support Tulsi Gabbard. You liked her. Um, you want her on the team at the end of this. And she, and who knows, if she doesn't make it, maybe she'll be on the team at the end of this. My hunch is I think Tulsi isn't going anywhere. I just have this hunch that she's going to hunker down and go for bigger things if she doesn't get it this time. I don't know what that entails, but I have a feeling... She was willing to say, I've served in Congress enough. Again, that shows real integrity, intestinal fortitude, all of those things that you look for, by the way, in a president. All right. <laughs> and this is why And she's saying, you know what? I see a path now. I think she was saying to herself, you know what? Wasn't sure, but I see that there is a possibility I could take this to the convention. Now, again, you've got super delegates. You've got all kinds of things that will work against her. But she's tough. She's a fighter. And the dichotomy for a lot of these uh, neo-progressives that run YouTube channels is that they're, again, and I said this yesterday on Twitter, and boy, oh boy, did not, either I struck a nerve or I, I was a little bit too bold in my assessment. And uh, it offended and hurt feelings. But I said, you have to come to terms with the fact that you're not Tulsi Gabbard and that she is a better person. She is a better human being than you. Her workout routine alone would kill a lot of people. Um, she's She's got a spiritual center, which uh, many of us lack and don't want and don't understand and think is frivolous and foolish, uh, and, and people dismiss it, especially those who are atheists. They just look at it as, even if it's a fairy tale in your brain. If you're an atheist and you think the whole thing is just a fairy tale, um, this delusion or fairy tale grounds Tulsi Gabbard in a place of love and of knowing that there are bigger things than her in the universe. And I don't see how that's a really bad philosophy, but uh, when somebody um, comes at her uh, from a secular perspective and they don't understand that this is a strong religious and spiritual undergirding that she has, they don't understand that. They just think it's just a fairy tale and propaganda and, um, you know, religious propaganda. Well, how have you just let her have her delusion? Let me have my delusion. Okay. 
If it gets me through, you can, you know, drugs, alcohol, those are all things that uh, create uh, delusions for people. And it's no wonder that so many people are addicted to so many substances in this country. And as the country becomes less spiritual, and I'm not advocating for any one religion, as the, the country becomes less spiritual, it becomes more addicted to something else, which is probably a lot more dangerous than believing in a God that doesn't exist, according to many people who just think it's all stupid. So um, I don't know how I got to that point, because I think what drives Tulsi Gabbard at the end of all of this is she's grounded in who she is. She's comfortable in her own skin. Um, I think she's morally superior to a lot of people who are critiquing her. And I think that's driving them crazy. And when they're called out on it, they, they just don't know how to react. And I, I, like I've said before, I'm, I'm looking for a president, by the way, who is a better person than me. Donald Trump is not a better person than I am. He's not. <laughs> and there are others. I could go down the list. I don't know about Obama. I mean, he, he handled himself well in office, and he was a great politician. Um, he talked a good game. I think Jimmy Carter might be a better person than I am. I mean, the guy has lived his life helping poor people since he left the office. He hasn't gone on the speaking tour. He's not Bill Clinton. You know what I mean? I mean, you can tell how people react after they leave the office, what they make of themselves, and what they're doing while they're in office as well. So I know Tulsi Gabbard would be a step up. This would be an upgrade, a huge upgrade that we haven't seen since the days of JFK. And whether you like JFK or not, that he set a good example for the country. He was a strong, compassionate leader. It wasn't perfect. Uh, and for the time he lived in, you can accuse him of all kinds of nefarious things by today's woke standards. And none of us are going to be able to withstand that type of scrutiny. So if your daily, I, what, what I, I think what I'm saying here, if your daily quest is to pick apart and nitpick and drive people crazy because they know in their heart that this is the right thing for them, that they believe that Tulsi Gabbard is the best candidate and you're trying to discourage, you're trying to clear a lane for Bernie. Bernie already has a big enough lane. And I don't think that's even necessary anymore. I think what you need to do is talk positively about your guy. All right. And the fact, by the way, if again, if we're going to do moral equivalency with war criminals, one more time, people, Bernie Sanders campaigned for Hillary Clinton, endorsed and campaigned vigorously. And many of Bernie's supporters ended up voting for Hillary, according to, to polling data. I can guarantee you a very small percentage of Tulsi Gabbard supporters would ever think of voting for, say, Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden, Beto O'Rourke. None of those people. Kamala Harris. It's a different, it's a different crew. It's a different crowd. Uh, this isn't any blue will do. All right. This is, I will look at the blue and it might do if they actually campaign on issues and stop with identity politics and woke cultural signaling whatever it is it, it's it's long term folks this is this is not the way to go and again the entire thing needs a huge overhaul and this could be the last election cycle where you see uh the two parties dominate the other parties have nobody in the bullpen really um howie hawkins is not the guy um, and libertarians, they have some kooky people over there that I just don't think would resonate. Nor do I think the libertarian platform is um, a workers' platform, a working class platform. It's an elitist platform because typically libertarians, and I'm libertarian in a lot of my thinking, but libertarian economics is for the haves who want to keep what they have, all right, and has no solution for the have nots who lose the lottery and then are oppressed by the haves so that's my video for today folks at least um for now until something else ticks me off don't forget to subscribe to this channel also if you can donate 
uh, I had like a double or triple demonetization. <laughs> I was talking about a, a topic that Tulsi was, uh, she was at an event, and I won't even say it out loud again, but it has to do with something that happened uh, like almost 20 years ago. I'll just stop there and I won't say any more. But um, that video and the one after it. So uh, PayPal, uh, you can do a one-time donation over there. Or you can sign up monthly at Patreon for as little as a dollar. I mean, that's an easy way to do it. Uh, and it's not expensive. And you probably won't miss the dollar, especially if you go to Starbucks. You're patronizing Howard Schultz. You can patronize me. All right, that's the way I look at it. Howard doesn't need the money, whereas, you know... Um, I don't even have a real, uh, you know, set for my videos here. This is just me in my house. But I want to thank people who, who watch and who encourage. Yesterday I had a lot of people reaching out just saying, hey, just get off of Twitter for a while. And it's the best thing to do. But when people are making videos too, just stupid titles in their videos, you know, Tulsi endorses Obama or whatever it is, when clearly she is still... Um, but just being herself, trying to, to get civility back into the world. Um, I guess if you don't understand that, then you probably may need uh, some some help. You know what I'm saying? You may need to talk to somebody because there are probably some other issues going on in your life. All right, I'm done with that. I know it was kind of a harsh assessment at the end, but I don't know what to make of people anymore. I just don't. But um, again, I don't know if I need to do this forever. Because, like I say, I have a family, and uh, I have other interests. Obviously, I have a music channel that I do, but I will continue because uh, I think it's important for Americans to unite behind the best candidate who's run for office in my lifetime. Her name is Tulsi Gabbard. All right, folks. See you soon.